let's see if we can um, run the bullishness uh, all the way through Palantir earnings here as uh, stock is uh, chopping around, but uh, generally drifting higher, uh, about 26 bucks right now uh, after uh, a decent day. We're going to get a little bit more love for it maybe after earnings here as we look at a software company that's uh, never short of volatility. Their outlook for the fiscal year uh, is basically exactly in line with expectations. They are talking about uh, AI, and uh, they did raise their outlook, but the street was looking for them to raise their outlook, given their artificial intelligence software that they are creating. So uh, that, to some extent, uh, I think is expected at this point, but still always nice to see uh, a liftoff in expectations. On the trailing numbers for the fiscal first quarter for them, growth was 21%. 634 million versus 616 million. I don't see why they wouldn't be rewarded for this report, KG, given the market was full of uh, optimism today. Is there uh, anything negative here? Um, well, Oliver, I'm, I'm seeing them actually missing the full year guide and Q2 guide, but maybe there was a wide range, right? And there might not be enough analysts uh, for this to really make a, make a difference. But I have their full year revenue guide at 2.67 billion and 2.68 billion uh, versus the street's estimate of 271 uh, billion and then i also had the q2 coming in a little bit short um as well but uh, i think right now so we'll see how this is all going to pan out i think right now we probably need to focus on the commercial side of the business we actually saw a really nice report last quarter where they did see a significant amount of growth when it came to bringing on new commercial businesses because uh you know when you're looking at government contracts those can be a uh, few far in between you can get a significant amount of influx uh, at one point in time so they want to try to move towards more commercial uh, it does uh, sound like they are doubling down on that and talking about how their platform is going to be geared towards uh, other market segments that maybe they're just kind of getting into at this point in time and really honing in on the commercial uh, customer uh, there's a lot of uh, activities as well when you're looking at the option market the 30 dollars calls were being targeted but there was a fair amount of 25 dollars calls being sold as well so we might have that initial pop but let's see how this thing marinates to say the least but once again, I'm kind of looking at their guidance compared to what we are seeing from Reuters or LSEG now. But compared to what you're seeing from those estimates, it looks like they actually did miss on the guides for, for Q2 moving forward as well as fiscal year. Palantir Technologies recently reported earnings that beat analysts' expectations, and this outcome was predicted by Wedbush Securities' Dan Ives, who's been a Palantir bull for a long time. Ives wrote in a new note to investors that Palantir is in a perfect position to capitalize on the AI revolution, maintaining his outperform rating and $35 price target on the stock. Ives expects Palantir to garner a meaningful share of what he believes to be a $1 trillion AI global total addressable market as enterprise and government ecosystems rush to implement useful platforms for automating complex workflows. So, Den Ives is extremely bullish on Palantir and sees an upside of more than 40% in the stock, but he isn't the only analyst excited about Palantir's future prospects after its earnings. In today's video, we're going to discuss Palantir's earnings to show you why Ives is so bullish on the stock. We'll also talk about some other analysts that are following Ives' example and turning bullish on Palantir stock. But before we do that, if you want to keep up with Palantir's latest updates and keep up with the stock market's latest news, you can follow our Twitter account. We post multiple times daily about the biggest changes in catalysts in the market, so click the follow button if you don't want to miss the newest market updates. Now, back to today's video. Yeah, the um, I would say the Q2 revenue definitely seems like uh, it could have been better. That one's uh, looking like 649 to 653. Street looking for like 653. Uh, the revenue I'm seeing is basically right in line, though, for the fiscal year, uh, about 2.68. But uh, look, I mean, overall, being able to lift these numbers up, pretty solid. There's a lot of stuff going on geopolitically, too, that they're talking about in the call. That's not a surprise, Caroline. I mean, this is a company with uh, big government contracts. So uh, to some extent, they might benefit from a little tension around the world. Right. Back in 2023, the commercial revenue was 45 percent of, of overall revenue and then the rest was government. But I will say, going back to Kevin's point about the U.S. commercial revenue, so that grew 40 percent year over year and 14 percent uh, quarter over quarter to $150 million. The customer count there grew 69 percent year over year and 19 percent 
quarter over quarter. So I think that's important because I think the big question is, can the AI momentum really sustain Palantir's growth? I saw Dan Ives out with a note heading into this report saying that U.S. commercial strength momentum is going to be so key. He has an outperform rating and a $35 price target. The one thing with Palantir that's interesting, it was up 8% heading into this report, is that it's actually been trading above its median price target, which was $21.50. So I think that uh, there would be questions. Are, are there going to be some adjustments here based on these results, or has all of this been priced in to Palantir shares? Uh, so I think that that's going to be a big question going forward, but uh, that, that U.S. commercial revenue growth of 40 percent is pretty impressive. We'll have to see if it's enough to uh, drive the stock higher, see, see a pop, but it looks like it's heading lower based on this chart. Palantir reported an EPS of $0.08 cents for the quarter, which was in line with the expectations of Wall Street analysts. However, the company's revenue, which was $634 million, beat expectations of $625 million. The company's quarterly net income was also impressive, as it reported $105.5 million, compared to $16.8 million in the year-ago quarter, marking its sixth consecutive quarter of profitability. Dun Ives believes that the company's artificial intelligence platform and bootcamps are what make Palantir stand out compared to other AI software companies, and if you listen to the company's Q1 earnings call, you'd know that CEO Alex Karp completely agrees with him. In the call, Karp made a bold assertion, saying that Palantir has no competitors in the U.S. commercial and government sectors. Karp boasted that Palantir's data analytics software is in a completely different league compared to other vendors, arguing that rivals are focused on narrow AI applications and can't compete with Palantir's general-purpose tech that integrates and analyzes data on a massive scale. He also trumpeted Palantir's tight ties with the U.S. government, claiming competitors lack the ability to build the complex software platforms needed by major institutions and highlighting Palantir's central role supporting American troops in global conflicts. So, how true are Karp's claims? And is Palantir really safe from competition? Let's find out. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Investocracy. Yeah, Faden, uh, and I think maybe uh, KG's point about the next quarter guidance, uh, you know, the one kind of flaw uh, here might be in there. I also do see uh, differing reports, actually, uh, as uh, Bloomberg has it at uh, their fiscal year outlook to uh, upwards of 2.69, but Benzinga says uh, 2.67 uh, 2 on the low end. Look, uh, I don't think that would be a cause for big volatility. I think the next quarter is kind of clearly missed by about 5 million or so. Uh, but Look, I mean, they're talking AI. They've got 21% growth. I realize that the stock has done well, Kevin, but, you know, there's a lot of companies that are talking AI and they're, um, you know, still in this. Think about all the chip makers that basically told us, yeah, we're in AI, we're in AI, and you're going to see it in two quarters. I mean, Palantir, it's, it's here. I mean, they already did 20% growth on the trailing. A lot of hardware companies actually didn't even do that. And then they're lifting their guidance from what they had said earlier. So, I mean, what else do we want? Yeah, I think it's just onboarding customers. And, and I don't think this is a bad report, so I don't want that to be kind of the, the narrative there. I think it's just the, the fact that they are growing, but I think the street's expectations, once again, got a little bit ahead of itself when you're looking at the estimates. Um, but they are doing the right things, and they are really focusing on trying to bring those commercial clients back uh, onto the platform. And as you kind of talked about, a lot of other governments are also looking at Palantir as well. Now, there are certain restrictions, like in Germany uh, right now, where they're kind of not trying to do business with Palantir, but uh, it does appear that that might actually change. And if that is the case, and that's going to be an immediate tailwind uh, for Palantir as well. Their model, just real quick, their model uh, is also very phenomenal too. They have like these boot camps. So instead of like uh, trying to go to each company individually, they basically invite all of these companies to a boot camp. And then they have representatives there that literally model out exactly what those companies need at that point of contact, but they centralize the sales. So that's also a very unique sales structure that no one else is really doing right now. And that's where they're seeing a lot of these benefits um, and they're able to scale uh, the, their expenses by doing so as well. So I know that's probably a little bit more than just an earnings conversation, but it is a unique sales tactic that has been proven to be very effective for them. And I would not be surprised if you see other companies like a Salesforce really uh, uh, take up that type of strategy moving forward because they have been able to onboard fairly quickly, well, in batches, if you will, uh, for those commercial clients. 
During the call, Karp said that Palantir is unique because there's something special about the software infrastructure of having the combination of Apollo, Foundry, and the ontology, which he believes gives Palantir a competitive edge that is too great to overcome. Additionally, he said that Palantir is the only company capable of making AI work in the real world, dismissing potential rivals as simply attempting to replicate Palantir's unique capabilities. He also pointed out that replicating this special infrastructure from scratch is going to take a long time for competitors to achieve. It seems like Palantir's financials are backing up Cop's confidence for now. In fact, along with the growth in the company's commercial business, which saw revenue rising 27% to $299 million, topping estimates of $292 million, the company raised its full-year 2024 revenue guidance to a range of $2.67 billion to $2.68 billion. To sum up, Alex Karp has a clear message to rivals wishing to challenge Palantir's supremacy, come back with an ontology of your own or leave. Of course, such bravado belies the messy realities of enterprise software. But you have to admire Karp as he touts his company's hard-won data analytics capabilities. For now, Palantir reigns supreme in its field. However, not all analysts agree with Karp or Dan Ives, and many think that Palantir is actually an overhyped AI company. So, let's explore this other point of view, and you can determine for yourself if Palantir stock is worth your hard-earned money. But first, if you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make, so if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow. That said, back to the video. Shares of Palantir sliding after hours after reporting first quarter earnings, despite the company beating on the top line and raising its full year guidance. For more, we're bringing in now Rishi Jaluria, software equity analyst at RBC Capital Markets. Rishi, it is always great to have you on the show. So let's walk through this, Rishi. So Palantir reports they beat sales estimates, it looks like, for Q1, Rishi. They raised their forecast for annual revenue. Initial pop, but now we're down here about 9% in the after hours. What is going on here, Rishi? Give me, give me your take. Yeah, absolutely. And Josh, thanks so much for having me. Always a pleasure to speak to you. Um, I, I would say it's a combination of a couple of things, right? It's it's high expectations because this has become a, a, a hyped or, in my opinion, overhyped uh, generative AI, you know, beneficiary company. And we can get into that in a second. You know, you saw the stock was up uh, 8% uh, on the day today heading into earnings. And then, you know, they put up results that are a beaten raise, but I think that was priced into the stock. And then at the same time, you see uh, com U.S. commercial decelerating uh, pretty, pretty big. Um, you know, last quarter, they put up 70 percent U.S. commercial growth. Now they're growing U.S. commercial 40 percent. I think it's a combination of those as well as some, some other things that's leading the stock down about 9 percent in the aftermarket. In this video, we saw RBC Capital Markets software equity analyst Rishi Jaluria talking about Palantir's recent earnings, saying that the company's commercial growth in the U.S. came in slower than expected. While Palantir continues to gain traction with U.S. commercial customers, as that segment of the business grew 40% from a year ago and 14% sequentially to $150 million, the U.S. commercial growth actually decelerated from a 70% rate in the December quarter. That deceleration, in the context of the stock's 240% gain over the past year, may explain the negative market reaction to Palantir stock after earnings. Jaluria attributes this to Palantir being an overhyped generative AI beneficiary company and expresses his skepticism over its bootcamp strategy. He also said that everyone wants to play the AI game, but he just doesn't think Palantir is that cutting-edge AI company they claim to be. Jaluria warns Palantir investors, pointing to more established tech companies like Microsoft as a better investment option. But in my opinion, Jaluria got a lot of things wrong about Palantir. According to Dan Ives and Wedbush, the firm is laser-focused on the AI story playing out with Palantir's artificial intelligence platform leading the way. Wedbush then pointed out that U.S. commercial revenue continues to see strength, growing 40% year-over-year as Palantir's U.S. commercial customer count increases 69% year-over-year. According to Wedbush, Palantir closed 136 U.S. commercial deals, up 94% year-over-year, 
because more enterprises are now seeing the value AIP provides with optimizing efficiencies and producing stronger results. Wedbush also highlighted that Palantir increased its full-year revenue and operating income guidance as it continues to capture market share with AIP across both commercial and government, but noted that some bulls had been hoping for an even bigger raise. In addition to Wedbush, Deutsche Bank upgraded their view on Palantir stock after earnings, with analyst Brad Zelnick raising his price target to $20 from $18. Zelnick has a sell recommendation on the stock, thanks to Palantir's rich valuation, but Dan Ives doesn't agree with him and called the recent sell-off a golden buying opportunity as he expects the company to experience more growth thanks to its impressive AI prospects. So, in summary, Palantir CEO Alex Karp made bold claims that the company has no real competition, attributing this advantage to Palantir's proprietary ontology, foundry, and Apollo technologies. And while rivals may dispute this, Palantir's strong financial performance and growth trajectory suggest the company is executing well on its data analytics strategy. Looking ahead, Palantir's increased focus on AI and expansion into new markets will be important drivers to monitor. If Palantir can successfully broaden adoption of its AI products, it may be able to sustain its leadership position. However, in the fast-moving technology landscape, maintaining dominance long-term is always challenging. Palantir will need to stay agile and innovative to prove it has built a truly differentiated and defensible market position in data analytics. For now, Palantir converts hype into hard revenues, backing up their CEO's vision with the most important measuring stick, cold, hard cash. The market's continued betting carp can guide Palantir's flight path to profitability in the stratosphere. But what do you think about Alex Carp's statements? And where do you think Palantir's stock is going next? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section, and don't forget to tell us what your valuation for Palantir is. If you would like to know what companies like Palantir have been up to these past few days, go ahead and click on the next video on your screen. See you there.